Today we're going to jump into creating IO configurations. If you do not have an IO configuration.wvs file in your project, you right click and hit new IO configuration. That will open it up or you can just double click on the IO configuration. However, before you double click from your Sunrise project, you'll want to open Work Visual, which is where we create our IO just from the desktop and go ahead and hit extras, option packages and make sure that your Option package management has the Sunrise KOP installed. If it doesn't, you can navigate to it. It should be in the Work Visual add-on folder. You can just select the Sunrise KOP file and then hit Open and import that into your profile. Once that's done, you also want to do File, Import, Export, and go to the Import Device Description files. These are ESI files, which you can get from your manufacturer like Beckhoff that have all your device descriptions. Once you do that, you can go back to your Sunrise Work Visual, open the IO configuration file, and double click on the controller, which will pop open a bunch of additional features that are within that control, such as the bus structure, which includes the control bus and the system bus. If you right click on that and hit add, meaning the bus structure, you can select a KUKA extension bus. That's what you'll want to add your terminal and modules to. If you right click on the EtherCAT stack, then you'll be able to add, like for example, an EK1100 module. And then if you open that up, you'll be able to right click on the eBus and select some sort of input or output. Here we're just going to select some nominal one. This is the EL1002, which is a two channel digital input. Once you do that, go to the IO mapping tab, which will show you the field buses on the right and the Navigate to the Sunrise IOs on the left hand side, which shows you again, we have a group of IOs called the media flange, which comes default with our type of media flange. You can go down to the bottom left, there's a little button that allow you to create an IO signal and just hit create on the main page and then name that group extensions or some other IO name. Remember that it automatically, when it gets to Sunrise, will add the IO group at the end of your IO group name. So you don't need to write IO groups. Then you can edit the IO signals by just going ahead and writing an IO name and saying create. Here you'll be able to see that it has the direction, the type, and the data type, as well as the bit width. You can play with the different types using the drop down menus to select which type you want for your project or for your specific IO. Once that's selected, you'll be able to go ahead and hit OK, which will save it. And then you can hit the extensions group now folder, which will show your two IOs. And you'll see that that middle bottom button is grayed out. That is the connect button. So currently you cannot connect because the data types are different. So we need to change this to Boolean. We're going to go ahead and change the other one to something completely different, like a dint, just to show you that it doesn't work. So here we're going to select input one and channel one input and go ahead and push that middle button that says channel connect and that will connect the two channels. So it's basically collect connecting your input that you made to the input on the field bus so it knows how to communicate. And then we can go ahead and do that with input two as well, that middle button there, connect. If you go over to the right hand side, there's that red button that will open up the signal editor. Here's where you could change, for example, some additional features for your I.O. if needed. After that, you can go to the Import Export via the File on the main tab and hit Export I.O. Configuration to Sunrise Workbench. It will take a few seconds, but then it will shoot all this detail back to your Sunrise project. Now you can go ahead and look and see that your project has been updated. This extensions folder with the XML files is now updated in your project and you can go ahead and use it. So in order to use it, you'll need to inject the class. So here we're injecting the private extension IO group. We're giving it some sort of name for our use case, so IO. And then when you type that IO dot, you can say get input one, get input two, and use it in your project as needed. 